Hi, my name is Sebastian and in these videos I want to explain how to build a recommendation engine with Java. I will use a graph database Neo4j and Quarkus to build that and in these videos I will show you how. And you probably know that I'm a very big fan of coffee and what we're going to use is a coffee example. Why? Because this is a very interesting uh, sphere, I believe, because if we have some proper coffee equipment and especially coffee beans, it is very interesting to see how much variety there is in flavor. There is actually more variety in coffee flavor than in wine. So just to say that. And if you go to a better coffee shop, then usually you have a selection of the beans that are available and the barista might tell you, well, which beans come in which taste and so on and so forth. And what we would like to do is to build up an application that can do some recommendations. For example, to say, well, if you like this type of coffee, then you should also maybe try that. And it will be based on certain criteria and we have a look into all that. What I want to show you is a very basic example application that I built for this reason and we will go through it. And first of all, what we have here is a list of coffee beans, basically. So this application um, now is already filled with some data with some beans that have a specific name and they typically come from some country. And uh, cover coffee lovers uh, here might already say, well, yes, because the country can actually distinguish some of the flavor like in from experience you can say that a coffee from ex, uh, from specific countries tastes in a certain way on average and also we have specific tastes that come from the so-called coffee flavor wheel where we say well this coffee beans taste let's say 20 uh, 42 to a point nine percent in this way and so on and so forth so these are somewhat like uh, taste what that tastes like so in, in which direction uh, the variety of the taste goes and then there is a way in our application to somewhat rate that like imagine a user just tries a cup of coffee and says well that matches my taste that I, I like that uh, that particular taste or not and then based on that data we can make some recommendations to say oh you really like that coffee you should try the other one instead where all this data comes from so um, Thanks to this uh, uh, website, Coffee Bean Coral, uh, where I took the data just as an example. So, I mean, I could use any uh, example here and I wanted to come up with some own names, but uh, ultimately to have a proper example of a few uh, dozen entries, then um, I, it was easier to take the data somewhere and not just uh, randomly create or to actually have specific, um, specific data. And um, especially this website, it shows so quite some nice information about here, like the taste, uh, for instance. And uh, I took that data or some of that data to start with to just build up this example. All right. So what we're going to do and what I would like to show you first is how we're going to map this into our database, like what our data model, our domain model looks like. That is quite interesting because if you don't have a background from graph databases or if you usually have been uh, used a relational database, this might look a little bit different. Um, and in this way, I also want to point out to a video that I created in the past that shows how to map this into Java applications in general. But what we have here, I'm using Neo4j and that is the very handy Neo4j browser. So this is a very I think a very cool uh, way to visualize data and to access and change it. And what I want to show you now, just to very limit the example to some coffee beans that we get here. So that is a note in our graph and it has a so-called label or a type coffee bean. So that's a coffee bean. And then if we double click, we see that this actually, well, tastes like something. So it has some relations here. We can ignore right ones for now and the relation says well that's a relation it says tastes and it also has a property like 1.0 or 100 percent it tastes like fruity like in other words it only tastes fruity um 100 and by the way it is from brazil so brazil that's another node in our graph that's a so-called origin okay and this is from that so we see that um, relations are expressed in these arrows 
in the graph. And well, let's look at some other uh, coffee bean because now this is a little bit more complex. It is a coffee from Bolivia and it has a taste fruity, nutty and flowery and chocolatey to a so and so many percentage. So that is basically how this is represented in our graph to, uh, that we say we have nodes for flavors, we have nodes for our beans, like that's the actual domain objects and um, origins as well. And that is basically represented in this way. All right, we can use then this representation later on to gather some information. But first of all, we can understand that if we store this in this way, that's just another way of storing data now in a graph database, then we can access it here. So that is our application that reads from that data, basically reading all of the coffee beans and then displaying the data that we have in this way. Now let's go into the code and see how this is actually mapped in our Quarkus application. What we have, we have a Quarkus project. So that is a Maven project that has been built with Quarkus that has the access to Neo4j actually via the OGM model. So all of that uh, works very well in Quarkus in the JVM mode. And I basically use this OGM model to map my classes and my domain objects here. So we have had this in a previous video. You can uh, check this out again. And um, basically we have a coffee bean that is represented in this way. It has some relationships. I think this one is the most interesting one because the relationship tastes like something also has a property and the flavor profile here, that's only a relationship entity. So that's basically the um, arrow in the graph, but not, not a node per se. And it has, it points to a node, a flavor node here. So that is the flavor such as chocolatey or fruity. And this is also represented in our application. Okay, so for that purpose, that is basically how all of that is mapped. And then just to start it out that you get the idea of how this uh, code works. Let's start with the very basic example of, for example, getting all coffee beans of saying, well, we would just like to lo load all the beans in a specific sorting, for example, by name. That is very easy to comprehend. We just go through all of the beans here and say, please sort them by name, this list of almost 100 beans. And since the beans have the relations there, we can actually access these relations. So if I have a look into this index uh, page into the HTML page uh, that we have, so that's basically, that's a Quarkus Qt templating approach. And we see this table here that is being created from the bean name, bean origin country, and then it goes through all of these flavor profiles, all of these flavors in a specific, in a specific percentage. And that is being printed here as well. So this is what you just saw in the browser. That is the outcome here that is being generated from the application. So this is only loading the data from the graph database into the application and then outputting it. That's basically how to start, like just mapping it and how to have that accessible in our code. I will show you just the remaining code as well that you got the full example. And obviously you can check all of it out on GitHub. That's all open source. So let's see, we have the coffee beans here. That is an application scope bean. So we can say, well, please load all of the coffee beans uh, here with the Neo4j um, mechanisms. And then we can have this, for example, in our so-called controller, which is the class that handles um, the forwarding to our cute templating approach. So we say, well, this is the page. And then we can ignore the sort criteria for now. We just get the coffee beans sorted by name. And then we basically forward this to the template instance. And then the template will be rendered with that data that we just loaded from our graph database. So this is how the mapping then works. That is just a very basic setup to get an application that uses uh, Quarkus and Neo4j, how to map that into our application. And in the next part, we'll see how to do a basic recommendation based on the user rating.